Welcome to this episode of Grassroots Advocacy. Uh, if you've had the opportunity um, to watch all of the previous episodes, you know there's a lot of really great information about how to serve as the voice of our residents, our fellow nursing assistants, and our profession as a whole. Uh, today's uh, episode is going to be about looking to the future. And so the title of today's episode is Advocacy in Government. And, and here's what I mean. Um, in recent times, um, our government has seen some very positive economic effects and some not so uh, positive economic effects. For example, a positive effect is we have a very currently have a very low unemployment rate, which I think is a really great thing. A not so positive uh, economic event is the fact that our nation's deficit is climbing higher and higher and higher. Now, in, in relative short order, um, the House and the Senate, the United States Congress, uh, will gather together to look at budget. And the budget is how we pay the bills, just like you and I. Well, given that the budget has continued to increase, it's reasonable to expect that our legislators will be looking to tighten the belt or to decrease spending. And we, I don't know that that's absolutely going to happen, but part of grassroots advocacy, part of the purpose of this, this show, is to really encourage you as a person who cares deeply about the well-being of the people you serve is to look is not only to react to what's happening today but to look to the future so that you can anticipate um, potential concerns before they arise so that you have time to um, to respond and and act in a way that helps to achieve a positive outcome so Already, as we're starting to look at the budget cycle, um, there are rumblings within the House and the Senate about decreasing social programs. Well, the people that we have the privilege of serving are beneficiaries or recipients of a large number of social programs. I'd like to, to uh, give you a look at some of those. So, for example, um, a number of people over the age of 65 benefit from Social Security. They may also benefit from um, Medicare. They may also benefit from Medicaid. Now, Medicaid really is a program that is designed for people who have limited resources. I can tell you as a young man, um, one of my grandparents had to um, live on their Social Security alone, and it was that Social Security wasn't enough to make ends meet. And then they required an extensive care, and so they ultimately became Medicaid beneficiaries. Two out of every three people in the post acute and long term care setting, uh, or the skilled nursing center, pardon me. Um, receive Medicaid um, as a benefit. Um, people, elders in our community also benefit from programs like Meals on Wheels, um, the Community Senior Center, um, drug prescription discount programs. There are a whole host of <laughs> programs that are provided by the federal and the state governments that really help um, folks have a good quality of life. So I wanted to, to point those out because as we move into the budget cycle, I'd like to encourage you as grassroots advocates to really keep your eyes open and keep your ears open. And if the federal government starts to talk about decreasing Medicare or decreasing Medicaid, or decreasing any social program that you know potentially or that you believe will potentially have a negative effect on our nation's frail elder and disabled citizens, I hope that, that if you see that coming, that you will take action. 
Now, it's quite possible that you might feel like um, uh, those cuts wouldn't have a negative effect. Um, and so you don't want to take any action. But if you're like me and you care deeply about the well-being of the men and women um, who by their their investment, their grace, their hard work, we enjoy the life that we do today. If you see those things start to happen, there are a couple of things you can choose to do as a grassroots advocate. One of the things that you can do is you can email your elected officials in the House and in the Senate and at the State House and in the House and the Senate. Email those folks and express your concern. And also, if you happen to be aware of some alternatives, then you could su suggest those alternatives. So, for example, you might say something in your email like, my concern with decreasing Medicaid is that the people that reside in long-term care don't have very many resources, and if we cut Medicaid, that will mean even less resources to meet their needs. As an alternative, I would suggest that we, de that we decrease spending um, in the area of government operations. So you provide them with what your concern is and you provide them with an alternative. <clears throat> now, um, there are other things you can do. You can also create a petition either online or in your community and have the people in your community or in your, uh, your electronic community sign that petition um, resisting against um, any proposed cuts that would have a negative effect on the, the elders that we care for. It's up to us, especially as it relates to people who reside in, in nursing homes. It's up to us to speak as a voice for them in our cities, in our counties, in our state, and of course nationally. Because decisions that are made um, thousands of miles away in the Beltway have real repercussions or ramifications for the people we serve in our local community. So I really want to encourage you, be on the lookout for what our legislative body is going to do. And oh, by the way, um, the current um, president of the United States, uh, as the president was running for election, said, that, that he would do everything he could to protect Medicare and Medicaid. So it's okay for us to hold that elected official up to um, his word. Um, so I encourage us to just really think about those things. Um, as we wrap up today, I want to share with you this quote from a really dynamic person. Her name is Madeline Albright. She said, it took me quite a long time to develop my voice. And now that I have it, I'm not going to be silent. So now that you've developed your voice as a grassroots advocate, if you see an injustice, if you see a danger, if you see a potential um, for a negative consequence for our frail, elder, and disabled citizens, please don't be silent. Speak up. Until the next episode of Grassroots Advocacy, be well.